hello my sweet sweet friends in Monet Cafe I am so thankful to be able to bring you this video because so many of you have been asking how everything is going many of you who are subscribers know that my studio and my home has been flooded because of Hurricane Irma um, way too much to go into here but I know many of you have asked how things are going um, I was able to save um, many of my art supplies I can't get to them right now uh, some things were lost and uh, many things in our home were lost but you know what as Americans we have way too much stuff anyway <laughs> so we are living in a travel trailer now and uh, we're actually restoring another property that we had it was an old home that we were kind of doing like the fixer-upper show trying to uh, renovate it and uh, it's coming along it's going to be a little while but um, the process of restoration of our home that flooded is uh, going to take a while um, again a lot lost but you know our home is in heaven so uh, we are going to be just fine and the thing I miss the most are the the spiritual things not the physical things the things that I love the painting it's not about the actual painting it's about the process and of course sharing with all of you and um, communicating with you actually now in our Facebook group I miss that I mean I, I log in and I see uh, the beautiful paintings but I'm not able to share my videos anymore uh, for the moment so that's why the title of this video is Monet Cafe lives on. We will uh, get things recovered and be able to, uh, I already have ideas for the next studio. I think it will probably be just a few months before I'm able to start making videos again. So that's my hope and my prayer. And the great thing is Monet Cafe is not um, flooded away <laughs> by the floodwaters. It lives on through all of you. And um, I'm so thankful that it is about um, it's about us it's not about me and uh, we have a beautiful group of people learning and growing together please join the Facebook group if you haven't already if you're seeing this video for the first time please subscribe to this channel because again Monet Cafe is coming back stronger than ever and uh, it's because of all of you so anyway without further ado I think it's appropriate this final painting that I did uh, before the flood was of this lion it's a very spiritual image for me uh, the Bible speaks of the lion of the tribe of Judah where our Creator will come back and restore all things uh, to the beauty and the perfection that it was intended to be and so wow is that just like so poetic or what <laughs> and uh, very appropriate with the situation I'm in so enjoy this I am going to do a voiceover and give a lot of instruction on how to uh, approach this painting not just painting animals painting people with using a lot of uh, uh, colors that you wouldn't normally think if you're a beginning artist you wouldn't think oh I can't use purples and greens in uh, in the sh in faces or in animals and uh, for fur but uh, there's some really nice little um, things you can use uh, strategies of color that you can use that will make your painting pop with color and uh, and stand out as art rather than just a reproduction of a photograph so relax enjoy and I'm so glad to be bringing you this video and I'm so thankful I recorded this before the flood anyway love all of you and here we go okay so at this point you can see I have in my sketch I think I actually did use just regular pencil you know kind of lightly to do the the, uh, the drawing um, and now I don't use pastel pencils often unless as in this case I need to get into a really small area and I'm going to be focusing a lot on getting this eye correct um, in portrait work whether it's people or animals it is so crucial to anatomically Get things correct especially that eye you know they say the eye is the window of a soul of the soul and uh, I believe that is true and it's in, true in art that you know t for your work to look professional there's some things that are worth taking the time to measure um, and get correct and even though I have the pencil sketch at this point you can see with my hand there I'm I'm constantly measuring still 
you know, because I want to get even my values and my shading and everything uh, accurate and uh, in the correct places. So here I am using a medium to dark value um, purple and what I'm doing is basically getting in a value study. I talk about value studies all the time in my other videos. And so the same thing applies when you're working on any type of portrait work. Um, you've got to basically just get in the darks and the lights and uh, then start uh, carving out. I, I always think I'm like carving as much as I'm painting with pastels. I just love this medium. Um, but also notice too, that I use what I call, I don't know if it's the correct term, but just directional strokes. That's uh, one of the, the tips that I like to give with, uh, with portrait work or, or really anything, landscapes. You want your, your strokes to go in the direction that they would in, in real life. And uh, so whenever I'm doing like the fur, uh, you want to uh, lay those values in directionally you know how it's falling how it's uh how it is laying on the face and so you may notice that that's how i try to maneuver the pastels now i'm using a dark uh, i believe it's a terry ludwig dark might be even the eggplant because the darkest area the darkest value in this uh in the face of this lion if you look at the reference image you can see it's the nose most definitely especially that left uh, lower side of the nose um, and uh, the creases in the mouth, you know, where it joins the bottom jaw there, and also the eye. There's some dark shading on that crease of the eye, and uh, also up in the ear that you can't see where I've cropped it off here. Um, so I'm just, once again, you've got to establish the darkest darks so that the rest of your values will be cohesive and, um, and accurate. Uh, so now I'm getting in some of those lighter values. Uh, I noticed down uh, actually under the chin, now you can't see because I'm using this, uh, I'm getting the reds in the nose there, but I, I saw some pinks even in that fur underneath the chin. Um, so I just got in a lighter pink just to kind of not just establish value, but uh, establish my color palette. I'm praying right there and praising the Lord <laughs> in fast motion there. Um, so again, I'm, I'm looking now to always at where is my light source and it's usually pretty easy to find it you just look where the the light is highlighting on something and in this case in the reference photo you can see uh, the light source is uh, on uh, from the uh, the right side you can see it on the nose on the um, the bottom of the chin and so I'm constantly look at my face looks funny there I'm squinting I always give that a suggestion squint you know squint your eyes really tightly and look at your reference image and you'll be able to see the lightest values so again now I got in the dark values now I got in those light values where the where the sunlight is shining on the nose and the chin now again I'm establishing more of the uh, the color values now see how I grab that green again like I said you can use green and purples and uh, colors that you wouldn't normally think are in a face but they are um, so many times we think that faces like a human face is tan uh, or different shades of brown but depending on the light in the room or the light from the sun there are so many colors that are in um, uh, in shadows and and in the light and what's a great thing to do as an artist is to train yourself to see these colors um, not uh, in real life you know in your everyday life is to constantly study um, you know, even if you're just looking at someone or something and, and just ask yourself, what colors are in this? I get asked all the time is, how do you know to pick up that green? Or, um, and I think it just comes from uh, being a student of the world. And um, also too, one thing I will say that has helped me in knowing what types of colors I can use is working in Photoshop. I have been able to use Photoshop to basically just get a little sample of a color somewhere in a reference photo and I will see that when it does the color picker it's called if you're familiar with Photoshop you'll know what that is then um, you can see what the color is and often it's not what you think it is so that that really helps a lot that might be a little advanced but but anyway I'm gonna continue to work here for a bit and uh, add some commentary
So now you can see I am beginning to sketch in the background, still keeping it very loose, nothing very um, detailed or uh, descriptive at this point. I did happen to like in this photo, the reference photo, how the background was very blurry. That's a, a wonderful technique that you can use, which uh, is actually uh, correct with, uh, uh, with good art, is that our distant images get less value less color and less detail um, and it's just a great illusion that we can do to create that sense of depth now i apologize here i had some camera problems i didn't realize somehow my camera was not recording so you can see it jumped ahead into the painting but um you know you can see now here i am working on getting that eye and again it is so crucial for me to get that um, it's it's like an emotion I want to capture with his eye. I want it to be confident um, and fierce, yet um, loving at the same time. If that can be accomplished, now, again, I I think of uh, of the biblical reference of the line of the tribe of Judah, which represents Christ. And at his return, uh, there will be some fierceness <laughs> to make things right again. And uh, but it is all in love. He is love. And so that is what I'm trying to get accomplished in, uh, in this eye. And I often pray while I'm painting. And uh, I did end up liking the finished um, expression that was uh, um, accomplished after this painting. So you can see now, I mean, it's just more than you think when you're trying to get the values right around the eye. I had to add that, that white underneath the eye also, too, not just studying what you see, but studying your subject matter in general is always a good idea. Uh, for example, get online or wherever and start studying lions. Look at how their facial structure is or their bone structure. Look at how their markings are. And I know typically that the lions do have that white kind of around the bottom of their eye and, uh, and around their nose and, uh, of course, on their chin, too. So, you know, just constantly analyzing and learning. Art is never ending and it's a wonderful thing. We can continue uh, forever and never uh, exhaust the things we can learn as artists. So I apologize sometimes if you hear noise on this video. I'm trying to um, help that as much as possible to make the audio clear, but where we're staying now uh, until we can get a home renovated is in a travel trailer that happens to be kind of near a road. Uh, it's pretty good right now, but sometimes it gets rather noisy. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to continue to just uh, let you guys enjoy the painting process, <clears throat> and I may pop back in here every so often.
Now you can see I'm uh, further um, establishing the background. I did like how uh, when I had just uh, blocked it in before, how those trees in the background almost looked like the three crosses on the hill you know, at Calvary. Uh, but I thought that might be a little too cliche, so I thought it's probably best just to have it a subdued forest. So again, I'm working on um, getting that pushed back so that it's believable as distant trees. Again, you don't want sharp edges, you don't want a lot of detail, you don't want dark values or bold color in background uh, distant uh, things, you know, whether it's forest or mountains or whatever. And uh, so I'm, I'm getting the warmer grasses towards the front and cooler greens and blues in the background. Also too, I wasn't quite sure on, in the reference image, you see that log that's like, looks like he's standing near a, a big log or a tree. You can't really tell what it is. And I wasn't, oh, I'm praising the Lord again. <laughs> um, it wasn't clear on uh, whether or not I wasn't clear on whether or not I should leave that in in there so that's why I'm kind of avoiding it and uh, if you've seen the final painting you can see I decided it was a bit of a distraction I decided just to make it more like a um, nondescript grasses or whatever in the background so that the main focal point is him and that's one neat trick you can do as an artist too is you control what the viewer focuses on by what you give more detail less detail more value less value and uh, in this case I want it to be the lion of course um, then I want the eye to play around in the image a little bit and, and, and uh, meander through the painting so then I can kind of uh, uh, get an idea of where I want the focal points to be so that's something you just get better at in time and um, you know anybody um, can learn to do this some people do have more of an artistic gift than others. The Lord gives everybody their own gifts. And so, you know, don't get discouraged if these things don't come quickly to you because uh, just like anybody can learn to play piano, you know, you can learn it. There are rules you can follow. Uh, some people just happen to have that beautiful gift. <laughs> and um, so if you love it, you most likely have a gift. And uh, you may not have the same gifts others have. You, you don't actually, nobody has the same gifts, but you absolutely can learn it. And as I always stress, I want you to enjoy art, not constantly comparing yourself to others or getting so frustrated. See, I'm, I'm talking to myself here because these are things I have done. <laughs> I don't do it as much anymore. I really have learned to enjoy the process. I got the greatest compliment from someone who commented on uh, in a, one of the comments on on one of my videos and they said I was like a female Bob Ross <laughs> I loved that if you're as old as me you remember Bob Ross he was the gentleman who who had the crazy hair and would teach painting lessons I believe it was on public television and he didn't only teach painting but he encouraged and inspired and you just felt at peace when you watched him and so again that is the greatest compliment because I hope um, not just I'm giving art lessons, but I hope I'm giving um, just some positive um, feelings as well. Um, now again, you can see I'm still working on this and trying to figure out what I'm going to do with that log, I think, at this point. But I've got a lot. I really am happy with the, the background trees. Um, and so now I'm going to uh, paint a little bit more. And then I'm going to add a few comments at the end when I show you what I do with the fixative. I use some fixative um, and you'll see how I do that. All right, so enjoy until I comment again. Okay, so this jumped ahead a little bit where I had added some darker values, um, usually down deep at the ground in the uh, bottom of the grasses, you're going to have your dark colors that are like dirt colored <laughs> and darker values. And so I got those in, it gave some richness and it also brought those grasses more to the foreground because of the warmth and color and their boldness. Um, pardon for the hopping around in the video here uh, now I just I, I don't know I felt like I should have some purples in there too but I played around with this if I remember correctly and um, 
I actually felt like I wanted to get it even more loose, so I ended up just blending it uh, a bit. I think I used my pipe foam insulation, you may have noticed in some other videos, just to blend because I was going to use the technique, which you'll see in a little while, where I um, spray it with fixative. I don't spray fixative to fix the painting at the end, but I do use it to um, manipulate um, uh, what I'm trying to accomplish as far as getting down more layers. There, I popped up the blare there, you see it really quick. Um, again, I, I kind of took this uh, from the wonderful artist Karen Margulis. She uses the blare fixative, uh, the low odor fixative, uh, uh, in a way that I really love, so I've emulated that and see how that allowed me you got the dark like ground and with the fixative on top i was able to take that pastel and uh, just kind of hint at those grasses on top and it really gave more of an impressionistic look instead of just the pastels on the sanded paper by the way i failed to mention this is i believe the sennelier le carte paper um, it comes in a pad. This particular sheet was, and I don't know if it's called tan or something, but it has this pretty seagrass blue. It has a dark, it has some lights um, in the pad. And uh, I really love this paper. I talk about UART paper a lot, which I love, but I love the Lacarte Sennelier paper. It's a little bit more coarse, and for me, it helps to keep that impressionistic style. So lots of choices, lots of things we can use and uh, you can just learn so much from other artists. Now I am getting in these, uh, these whiskers. Um, I'm trying to get them correct. They're not showing a whole lot on the back, but I still want to hint at that. And I'm using a harder pastel here. A soft pastel is going to give you way too thick of a line for these whiskers. And uh, there are some artists who have better techniques for getting this, people who do a lot of cat portraits and things. But mine again is just giving a hint at it. I want to make sure I get them, again, anatomically correct. Um, I mean, they don't have to be perfect, but you want to get it in, in the way that whiskers typically grow. I'm always amazed at how long whiskers are on cats. And I've heard, I don't know if this is true, but their whiskers are kind of used as feelers to know how what they can fit through, you know, and uh, um, just ways that they move and things that they go through. and they they judge their sense of distance with their whiskers i don't know if that's true but it sounds really cool okay so same thing they have whiskers on their eyes as well i got that one a little long <laughs> um, but you can just kind of blot it out with your finger and soften it uh, pastels are very forgiving a lot of people think um, oh my goodness you can't paint over them and what do you do if you make a mistake but as you work with these you learn there are lots of little tricks you can do to correct things so I'm kind of getting this wrapped up here, and uh, I just wanted to say how much I miss all of you, but I am confident that I will be back soon making videos. Our lives are just so busy right now that I literally have no time to paint, and again, all of my paint supplies are, uh, the ones that I saved, are stored away that are very hard to get to right now. They're packed away in an attic as far back with everything in front of them when we were trying to save stuff from the floodwaters. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I'm looking forward to getting my new Monet Cafe Studio and uh, don't unsubscribe to the channel. Uh, stay tuned for more and please, if you haven't already, join the Monet Cafe Art Group, that's the name of the group, on Facebook. You will get so many um, suggestions, advice, you can, sh you can see all the beautiful art that's on there and all of the other artists from every level beginning to advanced are so helpful so monet cafe like the title of this video says lives on it lives on through you monet cafe is not me it is all of us and so i'm just so happy that we are all part of a family together so anyway god bless all i hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it and i'm going to be back before you know it all right bye guys